friends, welcome to the Josh Rand Shipcast and Groovy Chicks. I'm your ultra dominant ego man. You can call me Mr. Ego. And you know, the last time uh, you were here, you know, the KH, he said it's winter time and the horses are hibernating. Well, you know, people wrote in and said horses don't hibernate. Well, he knows that. He was just making a joke. So he didn't know whether they were pulling his leg or whether they were trying to, whatever, they, you know, like trying to correct him or pull his leg. You never know about those kind of things, right? Is somebody kidding you or whatever? But anyway, I'm going to tell you a story about the KH back in the days when he was playing. Uh, for 17 years, he played over here in a little club out, out, out on the shore with a group called Standard Time, you know. And they used to say, we're well, a very popular group. And, you know, the, all these people would come in to hear them. And there was a cat that we used to come in all the time. His name was Cotton. They didn't know his last name, but his first name was Cotton. You know, and by the 10th time he came in there, he was a black Afro-American guy. Anyway, about the 10th time he came in, it was a cool cat, you know, and they said, hey, what a cool name, uh, Cotton. I want, I'd like to have a name like Cotton. Well, what would you pick? And uh, it went through the line of, uh, you know, fabrics. Like, how about wool? Well, no. Velvet? Uh, okay. Silk? Yeah, okay. I'll go Silk Jones. Yeah, maybe. How about linen? Uh, yeah, linen, linen. All right, linen, linen, you know. I don't know, chiffon, you know, chiffon, I don't know. Maybe satin. Yeah, satin Sam. You know, satin Sam. That's pretty cool, right? How about rayon? You know, rayon Ray, rayon Ramona. I don't know. Anyway, felt, you know. Anyway, felt, polyester. Polyester Paul. That's cool, right? Flannel, gingham. How about seersucker? You know, so they came up with these names. They ended up with these. Taffeta Mitchell, seersucker Duquette, chiffon Bernstein, polyester wood, flannel Kolb, and suede, alter dominant men. Well, no, actually suede you, but uh-oh, here he comes. I gotta split. I gotta go. I gotta split. <laughs> Welcome to the Jazz Ranch, hip cats and groovy chicks. And um, the alter dominant man, he cracked me up on that bit about the fabrics. And you know, when I did mention the hibernation of the horses, of course I was kidding. So people were pulling my leg or joking me anyway. But I have a special request from a subscriber to talk about Dave McKenna now. If you haven't heard of Dave McKenna, he's a great pianist who lived most of his life in New England, in Massachusetts, on Cape Cod, and so on. But he was just as good as anybody anywhere in the world. He just didn't make a name for himself around the world, which is too bad in a way. Because George Shearing said he was the greatest pianist, that Dave McKenna was the greatest pianist he had ever heard. And he really was. When you listen to him, you have to get his recordings to listen to him. You can't get it from me. But I'm going to take four of his techniques. I'm going to show you four of his techniques that he used on a particular song called Have You Met Miss Jones by Rogers and Hart. I'm using that song because I heard him play these four techniques. And they are the spread voicing, the tense, walking tense, the bass line, which was his signature sound, bass lines, jazz bass lines, and then also stride. He did all, the, all these techniques and he combined them into one song. So I'm going to give you those and we'll talk about them later on. But here we go now with Dave McKenna's interpretation of Have You Met Miss Jones?
Starting out, I just want to say I heard Dave McKenna play many times live because he was from Massachusetts and played on Cape Cod, and I was from Connecticut and would go to Cape Cod every summer to play ever since 1978. And Dave McKenna was out there playing all the time, so I actually got to hear him out there, as well as in Boston at the uh, Copley Plaza Hotel. But I also substituted for him on his, on his nights off at the Ace of Bears house in Hyannis and other places. And one time I actually got to play at the uh, Copley Hotel when he uh, had, uh, I subbed for him and he came in after he was finished with his gig and listened to me play for an hour. That was pretty scary. But anyway, um, George Searing said that Dave McKenna was the, the best pianist he had ever heard. And in, many people think he is the greatest pianist. But, you know, the thing is, he was a local guy. He just played mostly in Massachusetts. He did some American tours, and he made a number of recordings and so on. But I don't think he traveled much around Europe. He didn't become at internationally known. So if you're from Europe and you don't know who Dave McKenna is, then... You're in for a surprise. Just check out any of his recordings and you will hear one of the greatest pianists ever. And he played in a variety of styles in which I'm going to show you just sort of tidbits of each of the styles on this song, Have You Met Miss Jones? Rogers, yeah, Rogers and Hart. And I'm going to be showing you four of his techniques and... I haven't mastered any of them, really, the way he has. So you're better off listening to him and then listen to me and listen to this and I'll explain them. That's one thing that he will never do is explain anything that he played. As most of the great players, Miles will never explain or, or Dizzy will never tell you how they played what they played or how they came to know it or so on and, and so on. So I'm one of those people that is going to do that for you. So I'm in between, you know, in that way. But I'm, I'm, I love doing it. And so here I'm going to lay, lay it on you. The Dave McKenna styles. Here we go. Now the first technique that Dave is playing is basically your, your um, spread voicing. Which means that he's playing a lot of tenths over here. Tenths and sevenths. So I would like to play it like this. That, you know, that's a tenth there, now it goes to this one seven, one seven, then there's another tenth, like. Or I might do that, you know. Now, this next thing that happens, I just wrote out the harmonization of this line. When you have a rising line like that, and I'm probably wondering what that is. Well, it, all it is is just I'm voicing the chords like this. And. If, if you've been watching my videos, then you, you know that this relates back to the uh, Barry Harris sixth diminished scale line, because it really is based on the B-flat line. It would be this, this scale it has that note in there, so it would be like this. Not quite exactly like that, but yeah, there it is. There's the second chord. And then this one. But now I'm dropping the two, so I'm taking out the second note. So I'm taking out, taking out that note, I'm putting it down, on, well, that note there. I'm putting that note down there. So I have this. Now you probably can't see that, so you look on the score on my website and you'll see it out. But it, it, Dave did it a little bit differently on his recording, but like I like that one for that rising line. Then big chord here, big chord, A minor 11, and then he does a lot of embellishments, you know, lines and so on, he's, he's embellishing the melody there for the first two A's, and then on the bridge he starts to go into tempo, and he's playing a technique of stride, so he's doing this, I'll just break it down a little bit like this. It's, it's, in this key, it's, I'm not sure, but this key, it's in the key of F. I'm playing in the key of F. This is, so it's a little bit, uh, strides a little hard to do because I can't get the chord in there where the melody is. So I might go up an octave like this. 
Now stride is just means you're playing bass, note, and then chord, like so. Okay, so now this tune is not easy to uh, harmonize, but anyway, it just goes like this bridge on it. figure that's the Barry Harris diminished six scale again so in other words he takes the first 16 bars rubato out of tempo then he goes into tempo on a slow tempo and you know the last part that same line he's still in tempo now but slow now he changes the tempo makes it swing and then he goes into his bass line which is his signature sound the Dave McKenna sound is his bass lines so he has a walking bass line that the bass player would be playing but he doesn't have a bass player he's playing solo so now now if you say well how do you do that well now you want to watch my videos on how to play bass lines in your left hand this is this is like uh, Dave plays all the great techniques that a solo pianist can play. If you want to play solo piano, you don't want to play with other musicians, or you just want to perfect your solo playing, you have to learn to play bass lines in either two beat, well, both in two beat feel like this. That's two beat, and then four beat would be four notes. You know, four notes per measure, like quarter notes. And this is quite challenging, and in my book you'll see how I've illustrated how to do this. And also on videos I've talked about my bass lines and connected them with my book. So, like, you will see how I create bass lines on the left hand. Now, you may ask, well, how are you able to split your mind into two, two parts? You have a, your left hand in one part of your mind and your right hand in the other part. That is something that I cannot explain that happens over time. In other words, the more you practice doing this, eventually you begin to be able to separate those and have your mind split into two places. In other words, one part of your, your mind is thinking about your left hand, the other part is thinking of your right hand. And what happens for me is I start to not think about the left hand because it becomes automatic. And the right hand, because it's soloing and improvising, becomes the main focus. So I would say it's probably 40% left hand, 60% right hand. So you could vary that. You could maybe go 30% here and you know 70% here and you would maybe have a better line. When I heard Dave play, I thought he maybe had 80% in his right hand and just 20% in his left because his left hand was so so um, you know automatic, you know. And it does become that way after after you know a long period of time when you practice this. Now, you may get that a lot sooner, you know, you may not have to take so much time to get that, but that's what you have to do. So that's the second part of it, and now I'll continue. Now, Dave probably plays this tune longer, but I got right to the third technique right away because I wanted to um, not have this video be too long. So let's review. Like you had this spread voicing technique and I have numerous videos on that it's just you're spreading out the harmony and then we would go into a stride you know which would be bass note and chord slow for the second segment now the third segment would be after that would be the bass line so now we swinging you know improvising swinging now after that I went back to melody but then I was playing his uh, what I would call his third technique Let's see, we had uh, spread voicing, then we had the bass line, yes. Now, the third technique would be the walking tenths. Now, these are tenths. So now, to walk, to walk the tenths, you have to have, it's like a two beat, one, but it's really a four beat, like it's, it's, it's bass note, the tenth with a harmony, bass note, the tenth with a harmony. So it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 
Now, notice that I'm doing 110, 110, then I'm doing 110, then I'm doing 17. So on the two fives, I tend to combine the 110 and the 17. Then I go one. Now here on this next chord, I have the 110, but then I need to connect to another chord. This needs to be for four beats. So one, two. So I use a connecting note. Connecting bass line note there. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three. Now that's pretty complicated when you look at it right now. But if you watch my videos on this, I have other videos that describe this in, in great detail. I won't do that now. So I think the root and tenth technique is a little more difficult to learn. But, you know, if you're on that level, then that's what, something you want to learn as a solo pianist because it allows you, expands your playing. And the last technique that he does is, of course, the, the uh, which is a classic technique. It came out of ragtime, which is stride. In other words, bass note, chord, bass note, chord, you know, that kind of thing. You know, so we had, uh, what do we have? I try to do more up here in terms of chords now because this is just, you know. So you can either, you know. That kind of thing. And there was more bigger sound. And that was Dave's way of making the song start out in a subtle way, slowly and build the energy and keep building the energy and keep expanding the techniques into the biggest technique which with the stride and the most rhythmic the most energetic and what a great concept that was to perform that way to just start here and then build and build and build and have an exciting ending and so on and it was dramatic always brought the house down and everybody applauded you know so that's what you want to learn to do you want to learn how to start here build 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 your energy and then end in a flourish a big big ending you know most important thing people listen to are the beginnings and the ending of songs whatever you do in between they don't care about it. okay <laughs> that's a joke here's a quick look into my book it's you know three ring binder Pages come out easy for photocopying, it lies flat on the music stand. And this is chapter 14 of book one on stride piano. You have examples, the theory, and then you have songs to play in that style. And then here's the chapter on tenths and a song to play. And then also in book two, you have a chapter on bass lines, two beat bass lines and four beat bass lines and the rules, and you have songs to play. So it's very practical. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Please keep in touch. Please write to me. I love to hear from you. I always answer all my comments if you give me time. And until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, swing loose. And we'll see you next time around the block. Be cool. Bye-bye.